So continuing uh, the story of highly composite numbers, uh, let's look quickly at the list, at a list of the first few highly composite numbers. Here, uh, it, these are the n's, these are the actual numbers. Here's how many divisors they have. Here's where they rank on the list. Um, and they started with an honorary number zero here for one. Um, and then here's the, probably the most interesting thing. They've got each prime, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. And uh, so they're, they're just listing the exponents. So this is this crucial thing that I was talking about in the end of the last video, that the pattern of the exponents, we already know something about what it has to be. It's going to be this decreasing sequence. So for example, here, 10,080, it's saying it's 2 to the 5th times 3 squared times 5 to the 1 times 7 to the 1. And there's that decreasing pattern. We would never see 1, 2, 3, 4 or something like that. Um, it can stutter 2, 2, and then a lot of the time it has repeated 1s. So it's not strictly decreasing, but it's never increasing. And then, as I said, the question is, um, the really cool and subtle question, is exactly how could you describe what pattern is optimal? So somehow, like here, down here, 6, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, that's a good pattern that's going to produce a lot of uh, factors, 448 factors, which is the biggest for any number uh, less than or equal to 864, 8640. Um, and why is that? Um, you know, why is that a good pattern? That's really further than I'm uh, able to take these videos, but it's cool to look at it. So we can go further in this list. We can see again how this, how these patterns go. Um, we get up. You can ask questions like, would I get to, you know, when when's the first time I'm going to use, uh, let's say nine? We could look at say, I think here. Where was it? Maybe here. I think this is the first time I get two to the ninth. Does that happen before I get nine total primes? Well, it doesn't look like it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it looks like the number of primes tends to be bigger than the highest exponent, which is always going to be the exponent of two. Okay, lots of interesting questions you can ask with us. So, um, let, instead of continuing more with d of n, though, I want to uh, I want to talk about sigma of n. Oh, except I wanted to talk about one more thing about the pattern. Okay, let's go back to that. Um, one of the things that's a little bit annoying about this is that. Um, these patterns change in a way that's not incredibly simple. In particular, like here, going from the from 27,720 to 45,360, you actually lose a prime. You get the you get 11 for the first time, and then you drop it for a while, and then you put it back in. Um, similarly, sometimes you here we had like two threes, and instead of always having two threes from then on, we drop one of the threes and exchange it for two more twos which produces a bigger number and slightly, as it turns out, slightly more um, factors, more divisors. Um, so one of the things that's a little bit annoying is that going from one number to the next, the ratio is not a, necessarily an integer, like 720 to 840. That's definitely not an integer ratio because we did this trade-off bit. We didn't, didn't just put in some new factor. Um, and in particular, it's certainly the ratio is certainly not always a prime because it's not even an integer. We're going to discover in a little bit an alternate definition of antiprimes or numbers with large numbers of divisors that actually has a nice property that going from the next one to the next one will always just put one more prime into the mix. That's very that's much more regular and systematic. Okay. So, but before we do that, I want to talk about another very popular way of measuring um, high degree of divisibility, and that's instead of just taking the number of divisors, that's d of n, you take the sum of all the divisors. That's called sigma of n. And it does include 1 and n. Okay, You can easily take out the n if you want. And that's sometimes useful. Um, but we're just going to include n. Turns out that that function is a little less irregular than d of n. It's deeply related to many, many questions in number theory, as is d of n as well. Um, sigma of n, I don't know, maybe a little more important. I'm not an expert, so I'm not, I'm not sure. But a classic, a totally classic example of where this comes up is the definition of a perfect number. Perfect number, remember, is something where all of its proper divisors added up equals the number. Now, if you include n as well, um, not just the divisors that are strictly smaller, you get 2n. So this is a characterization in terms of sigma of a perfect number. It's where sigma of n is just 2, 2n. An abundant number is something that's got more a bigger sum of divisors than a perfect number. And that's, so that's where sigma of n is greater than 2n. Okay. So 
let's look very roughly at how fast we expect this to grow. We'll, we'll look at much more precise and fancy results later. It's obviously going to grow at least as fast as n because it includes n in, as, as um, a term in the sum. So what you actually look at is, uh, what we're actually going to look at is sigma of n divided by n. That's called the abundancy index some places. It's called various different things. But let's, let's think about it as the abundancy index. So for example, a perfect number is going to be where the abundancy index is just exactly equal to 2. Um, and an abundant number is going to be something where that's greater than 2. And so we're going to look for numbers that have a big value of sigma of n divided by n. So um, just like for d of n, we can look at that measure and look at the record setters. The numbers that are, have a bigger value of sigma of n over n than any smaller number. Because again, it turns out that this does actually, even though we're dividing by n, it does actually tend to grow uh, slowly uh, with n. Um, turns out, uh, I won't show you the derivation, but it turns out that it's again what's called a multiplicative function. That if I take uh, two relatively prime numbers uh, and I look at the sum of divisors of a and the sum of divisors of b and I multiply them, I get exactly the sum of divisors of, of ab. So that tells us that um, we're going to have, if I can prime factorize any number and I can figure out what sigma is for all the prime powers in it, those are, the, those are going to be relatively prime pieces of the number, then I can figure out sigma of the whole number. Now, for sigma of p to the k, what's that going to be? OK, well, I know the factors of p to the k. They're 1, p, p squared, all the way up to p to the k. And if I add them up, oh, voila, that's a geometric, sequ a geometric series. Um, so there's a closed form for that, which is not incredibly complicated. p to the k plus 1 minus 1 over p minus 1. So I just wanted to mention that because it's the start of a very cool story of analyzing sigma, seeing what you can or can't do with sigma. Uh, it allows you to uh, analyze perfect numbers, for example, and come up with the, the standard results on when is an even number a perfect number. Um, relates to things like Mersenne primes, all kinds of good stuff. Okay, But I'm not so much interested in that here. Um, but I'm more interested in fig just kind of fig kind of figuring out what those numbers are, and in particular, um, what's the analog of those exponent patterns that we had for the highly composite numbers. So it's not quite as obvious here. I'm not going to show it. Um, you still want a decreasing sequence of exponents. If you prime factorize uh, a number and you have uh, more threes than twos or more sevens than fives, then that's not going to optimize sigma for a given size. Um, but, so you still want a decreasing sequence of exponents, but that shape, that characteristic shape of the exponents, how they decrease for different, for bigger and bigger primes, it's going to be a bit of a different pattern from a highly composite numbers. Now, um, I didn't find an easy reference that actually had the, the factorizations, and I'm being kind of lazy, um, so I'm not going to actually do them. But we can at least look at a little bit about the different patterns. So here is the highly composite numbers. Um, with their number of divisors and their prime patterns. Let's just compare this, the growth rates of these guys. These are the superabundant numbers. So these are the record setters for sigma. Um, so notice that, let's say, like at about the 30 level, this is about 166, 320. This is already up to 665, 280. Um, so it's a bit bigger. Down here at the bottom, we've got 144, 14400. So that's an eight digit number. Here, we've got already a nine digit number. So it does look that like to be um, a superabundant number, it's a little rarer because the, the, the nth place in the list is actually a bigger number. So it's a little harder to be a superabundant number. I think what that reflects is, again, the, the slightly more regular nature of sigma. Um, with D, there's a lot of like bumping up. There's a little bit more places where, ooh, I get a record. Ooh, I get a record again. Ooh, I get a record again. Here, it's maybe a little more smoothed out, and we're not getting the record setters quite as often. No, there's just a fewer surprises, uh, perhaps, to sigma. Um, and so because these numbers are growing in a different way, you would expect the exponent pattern to be a bit different, just a little bit different from this exponent pattern. Okay. So um, in the next video, I'll talk about um, winnowing these things down. For me, for my money, these lists, even like the highly composite numbers, that's a lot of things. And I want to find some really special, very, very um, 
divisible numbers, and these are re a really good start, just the plain highly composite numbers. But Ramanujan defined a way uh, to single a s fairly small subset of these guys out as even the better, the best of the best, and then I'm going to combine that with sigma um, to eventually get a finite list, amazingly enough, of what you might consider the best of the best divisible numbers, the maybe we could call them the anti-primes. But that's in the next video.